Can anybody tell me what time it is right now? Ten past two. Beg your pardon? Ten past two. Ten past two. Okay, I'll talk for just two, uh, two minutes, if that's all right. Because uh, I do actually have to go. I literally have to go back to Birmingham to kitchen. Pain to Edinburgh. Anyway, um, uh, thanks guys. Uh, well, it's fantastic to be able to do a, a show like this for a group like you because uh, I mean it's really just a privilege to be able to meet so many like-minded folk uh, in one in one place. And uh, I don't know. I, I guess when I originally wrote this show and I wrote the this, uh, one man Star Wars trilogy as well, it was you know hope, hoping that one day I'd get to maybe do just a science fiction convention or something. Um, but this here for me uh, turned out to be way more complex than I thought it was going to be. I wrote this, not, not for Close Your Ears Kids, if it's in Kids for Shits and Giggles, and um, thinking that, well, you know, I could do it for a month or something and, and it would be over. But this and the Star Wars show have essentially taken over my life in the best way possible. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, it was strange. It was quite easy to get the permission from Lucasfilm to do the One Man Star Wars trilogy, but I'm sure all of you have experienced that... <laughs> The Evan Wheel, which is, you know, dealing with Hulk and stuff sometimes, you know, but it, it actually worked out pretty well for me. Um, I was lucky enough to have uh, Sir Ian McKellen, who came to see the show, um, just just before I received a, a cease and desist type of letter. Um, <laughs> it was actually more like an invitation not to be sued, and if you've ever received one, you'll know that there is a difference. And, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so, so Ian McKellen came to see it, and, and he loved the show, which I found was very surprising. Um, that's because I probably wasn't murdering Shakespeare that night, as <laughs> Canadians tend to do. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so anyway, I um, did the show, and he, he was there. Uh, we talked for, I don't know, almost a whole hour after the, uh, after the show. We didn't talk a lot about the show specifically. Uh, we just talked a lot about uh, the business of acting, I guess, and it was strange. And um, anyway, he was about to leave, and... Uh, <laughs> I realized that uh, I hadn't asked him like a single fan type of question at all. Uh, I thought if I don't ask him it now, I'll, I'll never get the answer. So um, anyway, I, I said, w when you uh, were fighting the Balrog, um, I mean, they, I know they built some Balrog pieces, but they didn't build you an entire Balrog. What were you looking at? You know, what were you looking at when they're doing the CGI? And he said, well, Charles, they took a tennis ball, and they attached the tennis ball to a string, and they attached the ball and the string to a stick, <coughs> and they held the ball, string, and stick aloft. And I looked at the tennis ball, and I said, you shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> and three years later, I was nominated for an Academy Award. <laughs> The moral of the story is if you have a geeky question to ask, please ask it, because sometimes you just get a great answer like that. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry to, to leave you guys. Um, uh, this has probably been the best. Uh, I mean, I, the only other show I can think of that was this savvy and this with me was probably when I did the One Ring Celebration in, in Los Angeles a, a few years ago. Um, but this is, of course, the type of crowd that, that would be there. So, anyway, guys. I would say may the force be with you, but that wouldn't make any sense. So. <laughs> may the grace of the valor be with you. I